Hey, just a quick reminder, have you ever considered meeting with me for a one-on-one -on -one coaching session? I just want to let you know I have a couple openings left for February where we can grab an hour and I can help you get unstuck and map out that blueprint that you need for the next things to do in your business. I'm here to serve you and to help you, sis. If you are setting in your own way or you're stuck in analysis paralysis, girl, I have got you covered. So go to ProOrganizersCoach.com to set up your one-hour unstuck session. And hey, don't forget, if you're a member of our community, you get a discount on my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. I love helping my ladies thrive in their business. So go now to ProOrganizersCoach.com. Now let's get on with today's episode. You're listening to the Pro Organizers Coach Podcast. I'm Samantha Brown, a professional organizer and business coach. In this podcast, you will learn how to start and scale the organizing business of your dreams. So let's jump in. Welcome back to the Pro Organizers Coach Podcast. On today's episode, I have Blanca Molnar, who is a professional organizer and personal development coach located in Houston, Texas. Her business is called Your Sorted Space. Now, Blanca and I have been discussing what would be a good topic for you, the listener, and we have decided that we are going to talk about a personality profile that is called Insights Discovery and how you can use this tool with your clients. So Blanca, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Hello, everybody. And thank you, Samantha, for the invitation. You're welcome. So could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you first encountered the Insights Discovery model? Sure. I'm happy to because you will hear that I'm very, very excited about this model and sharing this with you all. It's a game changer and a life changer. So uh, my background is in HR and learning and development. And in London, I was working for a consulting company. I used to hear about a lot of different personality profiling. I heard about Myers-Briggs, which is very famous, the this, the Luminous Sparks. Uh, but then my former HR director introduced us Insights Discovery. And honestly, it was a love at first sight or first hearing. Why? Because I think it's easier to relate using these colors and energies in this model than the other models. I will explain later about the colors. So I became an insights discovery practitioner uh, for my former company, which means that I could uh, talk, teach, and present about insights discovery. Although I left my corporate life behind, I'm still using that knowledge with my current business and with my current clients. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So could you tell us a little bit about the model and knowing this information, in my opinion, is super helpful because any extra tool that we can have in our tool belt for when we're working with clients is is nice. And it's always good to have as many tools as possible because you never know what you're going to encounter when you are working with clients. Every client is completely different. Would you just kind of explain to us a little bit about what this model is and how it works? You will hear uh, basics of this model and the color energies and how you can, how this model and tool can help you with your clients is actually communicating better, uh, behaving differently and flexing your style. You will hear me telling flexing your style because you will know them better. You know that what's their preferences, how they like to communicate, how they like to work with you. This model, the insights discovery model is using a Swiss psychologist, uh, Carl Jung's work. And he said that every advance, every conceptual achievement of mankind has been connected with an advance in self-awareness. And I love this. And it resonates with me so much because it all starts with you. So first, you have to know that what's your preference, your color energy preference. But after that, you can know, you will recognize the, the personality types in others with your clients. And you can use your knowledge, communicate differently based on their needs. So uh, this model is using color energies. We call them energies, not just colors. And it's very important to know that we all have all four color energies in us. 
but in a different ratio and proportions. And we have an innate preference and the second preference. So it depends on what are our first and second and third color. It's easier to behave that way or going, especially if you are stressed or tired, for example, it's easier to go to your default color. And it's harder to actually go and flex your style to the other color energies because you may be tired or stressed. But just making you aware that, okay, this is my preference and what my uh, clients' preferences are, it just makes communication and life and working with them more eff efficient. So these color energies are actually very descriptive. I love them. they called fiery red energy, sunshine yellow energy, earth green energy, and cool blue energy. So the four colors is red, yellow, green, and blue. And uh, the model looks like that, imagine a circle and split them into four quarters. So the left side of the, uh, the circle is for the introverts and the right side is, uh, of the circle are for the extroverts. The top circle, the top part of the circle is for the thinkers and the bottom part is for the feelers. So let's talk about these four quarters and what does it mean? Because um, sometimes people misunderstood what introverts and extroverts means. Mm -hmm. So let me clarify that how is if that's all okay. Because people are like, oh, extroverts are just loud. Introverts are just shut down emotionally. So introverts and extroverts is your attitude and how you recharge yourself. So introverts tend to uh recharge by themselves and from themselves that's how they get their energy life energy and just start the day meanwhile extroverts they tend to recharge from others so if you have like an ideal evening again this is a general it's not always happening it doesn't mean that an introvert doesn't go out all the time or an extrovert cannot have a chill night but an introvert Rather have like a glass of wine, favorite music on, have a book, and that's how they are recharging. That's how they are relaxing. Extroverts, they are like, okay, who can I call and <laughs> have a big party and go out? So that's their recharge. And um, so people leading with fiery red energy and sunshine yellow energy are the extroverts in this model. And people leading with the cool blue energy and the earth green energy are the introverts on this model. And extroverts are usually less energized in the morning. So that's, for example, good to know with your clients because they need time to meet others and start to energize by others. Meanwhile, introverts usually wake up, they're rested. And they are actually depleted during the day, especially if they have to communicate or interact a lot with others. So that's good to know with others. It is. And actually, that's kind of interesting that you say that because I have always considered myself an extrovert, but I always tell my clients that I prefer to do my sessions in the morning because I have more energy in the morning. And as the day goes... And so you're saying that actually makes me a little more of an introvert than maybe I even thought that I was, but I also recharge more by myself. Like I get energy from other people, but if, if I have a choice, it's going to be me winding down by myself. But yet anyone that has ever met me would have put me in the extrovert category when really I have more of the introvert tendencies. So we are all moving on a scale. And for example, I'm the same. I'm like a little bit closer to extrovertness or being an extrovert. But after a time, I, when I reach my limit, I have to shut the door and it's like, okay, I'm out. Yeah. And I need to restart because I'm so close to the middle point, actually being an extrovert and introvert, especially on this model that I know when my boundaries are, I know that when I'm tired, but meanwhile, there are like very high extrovert people. They can talk and, and be around people all day and they just get more energy. So even at 10 PM, like where is the next party? Where can we go? <laughs> because they are just so, we are all on a scale 
And also, if you are even like an introvert, it doesn't mean that you cannot act like an extrovert. Or, because I know so many awesome introverts who are like amazing speakers, for example. But they know that because they are introverts, let's say that go out speaking from 5,000 people. But after that, they let's say they don't accept a dinner invitation. They rather go back to, the, to their hotel and they say that I rather read. So we are flexing again, but, yes. uh, but it's important to know that we can do both, but we have kind of an innate preference. Yeah. Yeah. That's super interesting. Yeah. So let's go a little bit more now, real quick. I know when we were talking a minute ago, you said we've got the circle. And yes. so what color is at what point? Like, like top left is. Yeah. So, uh, the top right corner is the, extrovert thinker is mm -hmm. the fiery red energy okay the top uh, the right bottom corner the extrovert feeler is the sunshine yellow energy and then we go further then we go to the left bottom corner which is the earth green energy they are the introvert feelers we are still at the bottom part where mm -hmm. the feelers are and then you go to the last bit, which is the left, uh, left top corner mm -hmm. is the cool blue energy. They are the introvert thinkers. So the top is the thinkers. They are the cool blue energy and the fiery red. And the, the, the bottom is the earth green who is the introvert feeler. And the, uh, the other part is the extrovert feeler who is the sunshine yellow energy. Okay, perfect. Just so that way they can have a visual as we continue talking yes. about this. Yes. And let me quickly talk about thinkers and feelers just to clarify what do I mean. It's how you make a decision. A thinker is a problem solution oriented person. They have a task in front of them and it's like, okay, I have to get this done. Meanwhile, a feeler is focusing on the relationship. So, for example, I'm an, in, uh, I'm an extroverted thinker. I'm leading with fiery red energy. So when I go to a client, it's like, okay, what's the problem? What's the goal? How we get there? Meanwhile, uh, an intro, uh, like a, a, a feeler is like first need to like, okay, let's talk about your family. Let's talk about, I have to get to know you a little bit better and build that relationship because, before we can get things done. Yes. Yeah. And that's actually super interesting because I've interviewed quite a few professional organizers recently. And that's the one thing that I've noticed is that everyone has, of course, their own way of working with their clients, but it is always based on either, okay, let's get this done. Or how are you feeling? Let's go more of the emotional side first and get that figured out. And then we'll get to what we need to get done. And you work much better with people who are your same style. So obviously, because my nature, my preference is get things done. And that's, that's the fiery red energy. Uh, and my second energy is actually the cool blue energy. So I'm going into the analytical part that how, what is the process, how they can make things better in their life. Uh, sometimes I, I have to work with clients who are like, more like the feelers, but I know them and I noticing their signs and, and their, their behavior. So as I, instead of jumping into that, although that's my preference, I can like, okay, how is your cat? How is your dog? How are the kids? Tell me how you feel today to actually. Meanwhile, if I'm working with the fiery red leading energy person, they are like, okay, today's session is this, 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 this is the goal. And that's how we get down. Yeah. Yeah, which is it it really does matter, right? Like it it's super important to know what we what we are and what we prefer, but it is more important to notice what our clients need because if we go to a client's home for instance and they are a certain type but we're not noticing their energy and we bring our own energy that's opposite of what their energy is, they're not going to feel heard or they're not going to feel seen and when we leave they're going to be like, oh, well, that was uncomfortable. 
like we got the job done, but I didn't have a good time doing it or I didn't feel heard or I didn't feel seen where we want them when we leave to be like, that was amazing. Like she saw me, she heard me, she did, you know, everything I wanted is how this went. Exactly. And that's why it's so important because especially like when the complete opposites are working together, let's say you are working with an introvert and you come in and it's like, okay, let's do this. Let's get down and that's buzzing and music. And, and they will be like, at the end of the day, they will feel depleted because that's not how they are recharging. Meanwhile, it's like, okay, I'm an extrovert, but I know that my client prefers a little bit more time, for example. And what they say that introverts, they think to speak. Meanwhile, extroverts, they speak to think. Mm -hmm. So, for example, they speak more, but that's how they are processing information. They have to speak out loud what they are thinking about or processing. Meanwhile, introverts are more like, okay, give me a, a moment. I will think it through and then we can talk about it. So it, it's brilliant because you know their style more. And as you mentioned, it's so important to leave a session that your client feel more energized, more heard, more listened to, and and more comfortable working with you. Yes. And I tell my clients that all of the time where I tell them, I'm like, listen, I'm going to be talking some stuff out as I'm working, but that is how I'm processing. So just kind of, you know, I just, I give them that heads up of like, I'm going to be talking but I will let you know, or don't think I'm a lunatic because I'm over here talking to myself. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of times, and I guess that's a good way too, to where even just those small things, as you notice, will let you know, are they an extrovert or are they more introvert? And just that one phrase alone of, as you start working with them, because you will notice the, the clients that speak to think, and you will notice the clients that think to speak. So that is a huge tool, just that alone of, of being able to know, oh, so my client may be more extrovert or they may be more introvert just from that one thing. Exactly. And what I like about these profilings that so many times we think that it's personal. And for example, an introvert is like, oh, they are rude. They don't want to talk to me. What's going on? And meanwhile, an, an extrovert is like more talking and is like an introvert is like, oh my God, they just talk a lot. What's wrong with them? So it, it's like knowing the preferences and our preferences is it's not taking it personal. It's just knowing that that's who they are. But also what I would like to warn everybody about personality profilings, all of them, no matter which one you take, that it's useful if you don't stop that, okay, I took the personality profiling and this is me. It, you have to take it to the next level. Because if you say that this is me, everybody needs to know that, okay, I'm leading with cool blue energy and that's how they have to communicate. It, it, it's, it's not working. The next step is actually taking it further out and saying that, okay, this is me. I know that. But how can I relate to others better? How can I, I flex my style? How can I know? I use this model with, with not just with my clients, not but with other organizers, but actually with speaking the language with my husband. Because, and, and he's, he's like, when it's too much for him, he's leading with cool blue energy. So he's like, okay, your red is out. So I know that I have to tune that a little bit down and you will know this about your kids and, and your, about your, spouses or partners your friends and it's like okay now it makes sense it's not personal it's just that's their preference yeah yeah I remember whenever um you know in the Enneagram is another tool of just getting to know people and their preferences and who they are but when I first started learning about it what was so funny is I would be the same thing I would be talking with my husband or talking with one of my kids and all of a sudden I would have more compassion because I was understanding where they were coming from mm -hmm. and how it was different than where I was coming from, where the me before understanding that tool, all of I would I would have gotten frustrated or I would have gotten annoyed because they we weren't meshing. And then the more I got to realize, OK, it's not personal. This is just who they are. And this is how they think or process or talk or feel. And so I need to have more compassion for them. And so I think that these tools, just like you said, it's not a tool of like, okay, I'm this and this is how it's going to be. And we're going to, you know, it's always going to be this way. 
it's more of who am I so I can have compassion for others so I can, you know, be a better person and well-rounded person with a my self-awareness, but also be with awareness for others and for what they are feeling and thinking and going through. Totally. And I like that you are using the word compassion is like when you learn this, it's just a big aha moment for everybody. And it's just connecting more. You are getting steps ahead, steps closer to your loved one, to your clients, because you can relate better. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, truly, because and I I say this a lot on the podcast, but I want to make sure I reiterate it all the time. When our clients, the majority of them, in my opinion, and from what I've seen as an organizer, maybe 80% of them, when they call us, they are at a place of not brokenness, but at a stopping point. They are crying out for help because they need the help. You know, of course, you have those ones that are more probably the fiery reds, truly, that are just like, hey, I need you to come in and do A, B, C, and D, and then I'm done. And, you know, then they're good. But for the most part, the majority of my clients, they're in a place where this is emotional for them. This is stressful for them. This is something that they are going through. And A, it's hard enough to call somebody for help to begin with. And B, it's hard to allow someone into your home and start showing them in your personal drawers and closets and all of the stuff that you hide from everyone else all of a sudden they are sharing with us. And so I think it's super important to remember that when we are working with clients, because it matters for them and for what they're going through, that we have that compassion. And so any tool we can have that can help us with more compassion for our clients, in my opinion, is amazing and something that we should be looking into. And as an organizer, Since I've become an organizer, I have done so much more self-awareness and self-observation and, you know, all of the things that before becoming a business owner and an organizer, I was never really into that stuff. But the more I learn about myself and the more I learn these tools, the better I am, but then also the better it is for my clients. Yes, you can definitely serve better your clients. And as you mentioned, they are stressful. They are maybe in a very sensitive and emotional spot. You don't want to add up more with with actually not being to relate to them, to, more to the stress. And it's like how much difference it can give that, you know what, I know where you are, who you are or what your preferences are. Yes, absolutely. So let me talk about a couple, like just each energy, color yes. energy, and what are their uh, characteristics. So even if you don't take the test, you can notice or just figure out who can be on what uh, color, leading color energy. So the cool blue energy people who are leading with cool blue energy, they are usually very detailed oriented. They more of the reserved side. They are analytical, very disciplined, diligent, thoughtful. Uh, people leading with the fiery red energy, as we talked, they are very direct. They are very focused. They are very goal oriented, proactive and confident. They are the go getters. I call them go getters. The sunshine yellow energy preferences, I call them sunshine babies. They are just very enthusiastic, very encouraging dynamic if you want to have a good party you should hire an, a sunshine yellow energy preference <laughs> person because they will throw an amazing party they are, i call them the life of the party and people who are leading with the earth green energy so the introvert feelers they are very considerate they are more service oriented they are very supportive and patient in a team they will be the one who will ask you that Did you have your food? Did, are you hydrated enough? Every, is everybody okay? So they will be just the, the peacemakers and then they will set the environment, the, the right environment for everybody. So the mantras of each color energy is the, for the earth green energy people are the show me you care. For the cool blue energy people is like the give me the details. Surprise, mm -hmm. surprise. They are the analytical. 
And the Sunshine Yellow Energy people, they want to be involved. So they are the involve me because they like to be recharged by other people. They are the extroverts. And the fiery red is the be brief, be bright, be gone. Yeah. <laughs> Again, very to the point. mantras to the point. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's so good to know. Uh, it's also good to know because as an organizer working with our clients, some of them are more hands-on, some of them are more hands-off, and understanding that maybe maybe they are a little more hands-off because they're trying to recharge or because it's too early in the morning for them to get up and get going. Or, you know, like there's so many things that go into it. But I think, like you said, just being aware, right? And just making sure that we are aware of this is about them. They are our clients. We are serving them. They are paying for this service and making sure that whatever we bring to the table or how we do our sessions benefits them and does not do the opposite. Yes. And what is a very, very important point and a mistake you can make that actually it's much harder to flex your style when you yourself are tired or stressed or dehydrated or hungry or hangry. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get hangry. Me so, too. <laughs> <laughs> so I realized that when I'm well rested, when I'm prepared for the session, it's easier for me to flex my style and my behavior and my communication and tune in more to my clients. I have to be recharged. So that's just a heads up for all the professional organizers that if you are on a mood job for five days, very tiring, just prepare yourself also and some breaks, sleep, food and water so you can keep going and flex your style accordingly to your yeah. clients. It's also why for me personally, I only do three hour sessions because I know for me, that's my limit. And then of course, after that, I run off the trash and donations. So total, it is more like four to five hours. But I know for me, that's all I have. If I go any longer, I start getting frustrated. I start getting annoyed, you know, and so learning those things about yourself and it's trial and error, like you do have to figure that out as you go. But as as long as you're aware and you are trying to figure those things out for yourself, in the long run, it's going to benefit you and your clients. Totally. I agree. And and knowing yours, knowing yourself, as you mentioned, that you know your boundaries, set your boundaries. If it's three hours, then do three hours. Because after that, you if you cannot give hundred percent, it's not good for you, it's not good for your business, it's not good for your client. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, I've talked to, to, and I don't know if it's because I'm close to 40 or what, but, you know, I've talked to other organizers that are like, I do an eight hour day. And I'm like, you what? (laughs) Like, What do you mean? There's no way I could do an eight hour day. I would be like, I wouldn't even be able to function after that eight hour day. Like, because as an organizer, it's not just physical, it's mental it's emotional, it's stressful, like it's all of the things. And when I leave and come home, I don't want to feel so depleted that I have nothing left for my husband and my kids and my myself. I totally agree. I had eight hour days moving packing in, but I, I had to mentally prepare. And I always had snacks in my bag, like hidden. I, I have in my car, I have an emergency snack somewhere <laughs> because I, kn- I need to know that if something happens, there is a snack that I can, I can recharge with. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Do you have like a quick, you know, maybe just example of something, you know, a real life example that you could share with us to where maybe it, that would help someone understand a little more about the discovery insights? Yeah. So actually, recently, I worked with another professional organizer, and she's leading in sunshine yellow energy. And I know that. And as we talked about it, uh, extroverted people prefer or sunshine yellow energy people prefer to actually uh, talk processes through. So before we went to the clients, it was a moving uh, project, I knew that she needs to process and 
think through and speak through the process. So I was her sounding board and facilitating that I just let her speak through the whole process because I know that it's helping her. And it's like without getting any frustration or anything, because I know that, okay, that's what she needs before we go into this job. I knew that it's stressful for her. So I just let her speak. I bounce diet ideas. I give my insights on that. But I know that it was extremely helpful for her because she felt more like much more calmer after that because we went through this process. And I, again, because I know that she's leading with sunshine, yellow energy, that's her preference. That's how she's processing information. Yeah, where you could have, or someone that is not a insights discovery practitioner might have thought, wow, this girl, you know, is just venting and she's so stressed and she's so angry, you know, which would have then thrown the project off because that would have then been you thinking that she was frustrated. She would have been frustrated because she wasn't allowed to vent. You know, like it could have put bad energy before the, the job even got started, where because you were aware of these things, she got to vent. So she felt better. You understood where she was coming from. So you didn't take it personal. And both of you were able to go into the job on the same page and feeling heard and feeling like, exactly. OK, we're going to get this done. Yes. And, and because I'm, I'm leading with the fiery red energy, I'm helping her that getting focused maybe sometimes. So on the project is like, okay, we are focusing on this area right now. That's what we are doing. And that's how I give also my notes for her. Meanwhile, she was like processing. So as like, I could work with her more effectively. And I think that again came out as, as a breath of process for, for her client. Because we were on the same page, we were on the same team, and that's how we went together to make everything more effective. Yeah. I mean, I think that's amazing. And it's bringing up, I've recently been working with a client that, um, you know, I'll definitely make sure to kind of be aware now of what maybe energy she's coming from. But, you know, there are certain days where I have to literally tell her, just stay in your room, stay in the bed, which she has some health issues also. Um, but, you know, I have to keep reminding her to to take it easy. And then there's other days where she's in a mood where she wants to like get it done and, and go and all of that, which is great. But while we're working together, I have to constantly like be her compass, you know, like, OK, stay on this topic. OK, let's let's talk about this area. What about this? Stay on this box. Um, and so, you know, learning to do that and learning, you know, again, going back to the compassion, instead of me getting frustrated by those things, I am able to just take a deep breath and be like, okay, this is her process. This is about her. She's paying me. I work for her. It's okay. We'll get through this. <laughs> and then when I leave, you know, it takes me a moment. But I also know with her, I have learned how to schedule out our sessions because I need downtime in between. Absolutely. And you need to get to their time too. So to recharge after a process or, or after a session. I want to say that, so insights is not a solution for everything because there are so many health issues. Everybody is more complex than that. This, of is, and this is just the basic what we are talking about. So we haven't talked about ADHD and how those personalities are. So there is a lot of nuances you can wave into this beautiful fabric, but this is just the basic of like how each color energy is introverts, extroverts, feelers, thinkers, and, and what are their preferences? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I appreciate you so much for helping us lay the framework and, you know, just be able to understand and have that extra tool in our tool belt of just being aware. And like you said, it, it's not a a full like, oh, they are this or they aren't this. It's just more of that self-awareness for ourselves, and then awareness of our clients just to make life maybe a little better for them and for us. Absolutely. If you can, you can go on the Google Insights Discover. You can see that uh, that circle, what I mentioned. And you can learn about it more. It, it's a brilliant. It's, it's a life changer because again, you can use with everybody as soon as you dive a little bit more into it. 
and learn more about the different color energies and their preferences, how they communicate, how do they like to be led or managed, how you manage. So it, it's just so many aspects of the life. It can, it can change. Yeah. And I'll make sure to, um, to link the website in the show notes below. And so if you're interested in learning more about everything she just said, that way you can just click the link and it'll take you to the page she was just talking about. Yeah. And then that way you all can learn more to hopefully help yourself and your clients. And I am so grateful for you being on here. I will also make sure to link your platforms in the show notes below. And so if with Blanca, you're like, oh my gosh, she's amazing then please go show her some love. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. You can find me on LinkedIn if you would like to connect. I will give you all the contact details and let's connect. I'm happy to answer four more questions. Perfect. Well, we thank you so much for being on the episode and we will catch you in the next one. You have been listening to the Pro Organizers Coach Podcast. Go to the show notes to find all of the links mentioned in this episode and hit that subscribe and automatic download button so you don't miss a single thing. Thanks for listening.